Hello. Makani and Tanivi Meta. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, you are audible. Okay. So, good afternoon, guys. So, I believe you know the agenda that we are having this webinar. As you can see, we are having this webinar on career in cloud security. And we are having with us today is Mohammed Ajnas, Professor Mohammed Ajnas, who is the professor at AG School of Business, Data Science, and Cyber Security. And he has a Master of Computer Applications. And he has been a cloud computing expert with over five years of networking expertise. Uh, move to the next slide, uh, Vignesh. The slide is has stuck into the same PPT, the first slide. Sorry? Go to sir slide because we cannot see another slide. Okay. Uh, slide uh, is it uh, visible now? Is it th that is visible, but go to the next slide because you are discussing the profile. So that is a yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we are having Professor Muhammad Ajinas with us today, who is a professor at AG School of Business, Data Science, and Cybersecurity. He has a Master of Computer Applications. And he is a cloud computing expert with over five years of networking experience. Also has various certifications in networking such as MCI, TP, RHSE, CCNA routing, etc. So I believe Professor Muhammad Ajinas would be starting the session and he will be explaining more further about cloud security now. Okay, thank you, Vignesh, for the wonderful introduction. You, so let us begin. So today we will see what is cloud computing, adoption of cloud computing, latest cloud computing security challenges, cyber security incident response, and techniques to secure your cloud infrastructure. So I wanted to tell you at the beginning itself, like oh, this is not a one-way communication. Like if you have any kind of queries or something in between, you can stop me and you can raise your questions and doubts. We can clear it then and there. Don't need to wait till the end. And if you're very shy to ask uh, questions through the mic, you can just type it in the chat box. I'll be explaining you all your answers. Okay. So let us see what is cloud computing. See, it's very common word. Like nowadays we will be hearing more about cloud computing, cloud computing, cloud computing. See, if you are talking about the cyber security, the first word will come cloud computing. Wherever you see in the IT sector, you will see the cloud computing word. So what is exactly? We know that is something stored in the cloud. So where is cloud? What is cloud? There are a lot of questions will be there. And we will not be having any clarity like where is exactly it's hosted, the cloud. So today I will give you a picture. What is cloud? how it is the structure, what are the things are there in the cloud and what are the benefits of the cloud. And also I will tell you some security challenges. Okay. So let's see what is cloud computing. So every day we are using cloud actually. Look at this picture from this picture itself. You will come to know it's uh, something like music, some search button, some emails. So everywhere cloud is there. So that's how. Let's see. Are we really using cloud? Yes, of course, we are using cloud computing every day. Like people are fan of Netflix, YouTube. Every day we are using Gmail, Instagram, Facebook. Everything is working in the cloud platform. And we are accessing this cloud using our mobile phones. If you have a mobile phone or tablet, that is more than enough to access your cloud. So you will be wondering, sir, how does it even possible? 
we are not having any other than mobile phone we don't have any other devices with us or we don't have any other servers with us for accessing your cloud you don't require any kind of servers and all you just need a internet connection with a endpoint device that endpoint devices can be your mobile phone you can access netflix from your mobile phone wherever you go if you are in us you are in uk no issues you can access netflix you can access youtube you can send gmails you can send your mails you can access your facebook your linkedin account anything you can access so actually we are living in the cloud so let's see we will give a small definition for the cloud computing so what are the things are included in the cloud computing we know we used to store our photos in the google photos in the mobile phones you will have something called uh, called google photos apps google photos will be there or i have seen people are saving in the files in the google drive that's a one thing and icloud if you have a iphone user if you are a fan of iphone you can see the icloud there are multiple sources where you will store your photos and in future what you will do you can share that with your friends you can share with whomever you want so your google photos and google drive and your icloud if you are storing in the icloud obviously if you are switching your mobile phones you can easily download it from your icloud so everything is stored so we can say cloud we can use use for storage purpose and whatever services you want who will provide the services obviously the servers will provide the services for example i wanted to access uh, apple.com i wanted to purchase a iphone so i wanted to go to the apple.com so where is the apple.com the domain is deployed in a one server so where it will be even that server also in the cloud and you have entered some data after logging into apple.com you are searching about iphone 13 obviously you will get all the details about the iphone 13 right you will get what its features what is the ram size so someone would have saved the details about the phone in their database so obviously the database is also connected with your cloud and networking and various softwares and some analytics intelligence of the internet all those things are happening through your cloud computing so now let us make some official definitions for this let's see from the wikipedia itself we have a definition for the cloud computing they saying it is a internet based computing exactly it's purely internet based computing because we will not be having any direct access to our server or storage we can access only with the help of internet if you have a data connection in your phone or if you have a internet connection with you you can access your cloud and what and all will be there in the cloud you will be sharing your resources the resources can be your server we just discussed about the storage even storage also one resource and the devices for example if you have a device that you can share widely within your organization is also if you have a printer that you can share that's in the networking that's everything called a resource and the software where you will be able to logging into your for example you are logging into your college erp systems when the pandemic was going on the students the college students have access their college portal right you will get a portal where you can see your attendance your internal marks your assignments marks you can submit your assignments you can take your internals everything is happened through online so actually who is conducting that did the college is having their server no they deployed in the cloud and they will give you an access they will install whatever software they want for exam examination they will conduct through the online for the conducting online there are lot of variety number of softwares even that is deployed in the cloud and 
let's see one more definition cloud mid is a style of computing and in which dynamically scalable and often virtualized resources are provided as a service over the internet here is a some word called dynamically scalable what do we scalable in the cloud computing for example we all remember the big million day sales in the flipkart we always purchase the things from online right nowadays we are very lazy to go to the shops we will just open if you wanted to buy a headset what you will do you will go to the flipkart or you will go to amazon and you will search i need a, a like a headphone i need a like a bluetooth headphone and you will give your company preferences some maybe sony samsung depends on your choice so we because why we are depending the flipkart and amazon we will have more number of varieties we will have discount price right when you go to the shop you will not get a discount what are you expecting from the e-commerce websites so we all are depending on that website and those companies are doing big million day sales and all so that day like only on the specially on the big million days or diwali sale and all will happen in those particular days there will be having more number of traffic in that servers right usually for example let us assume in a day in a single day in the flipkart website 1 lakh people are visiting but whenever any sale is happening they can expect more than 1 lakh right because huge number of traffic will be there i have seen people are waiting only to buy the things uh, through online like whenever there is a sale or an offer is going on right and then when the big million day is coming okay next year will come okay i will buy on that day i will buy a new mobile phone or i will buy a new headphone i will buy a new shoe only on that because you will get a huge amount of discount right so that day they will be having a heavy traffic more traffic on the link so at that particular day what the flipkart or amazon will do they will request for more server access more traffic access they will not purchase any server only for that particular day they will take it from the cloud service providers if they are hosted their services in the aws aws is a very famous one amazon web service if they have hosted their servers in the aws obviously they will request to the aws we need to under servers only for 7 days this will be very cheaper the aws will charge them very less money compared to having for a longer term so like that you can scale it whenever you want you can increase the number of servers whenever you is not required you can decrease the server numbers as well so that is what scalable and adoption of cloud computing so where and all we have adopted our cloud computing so far let's see not only these are the amazon uh, web service gcp azure oracle ibm salesforce and alibaba so they are very popular cloud computing pr service providers it's very popular number 1 will be amazon web service always from the beginning itself of the cloud computing amazon web service is in the top position they are actually launched in 2000 oh their first uh, ec2 there is a feature called ec2 elastic cloud compute then s3 bucket s3 bucket is mainly for storage purpose you can store your data as informations your database anything on the aws with the help of s3 bucket so let's see where and all we have implemented so far we have implemented in health sector nowadays like if you turn back to 5 to 6 years back if you wanted to book an appointment with your doctor what you will have to do one thing you will have to go to your uh, you have to go to a particular hospital and you have to go to the reception when you need to say we need a booking this is a uh, doctor name this is a patient name this is the details you have to do manually and there was a one more option you can call and book right 
you will have to make a call to the reception and you need to tell the date and they will give you a time and they will uh, tell you the token number and you will have to visit it. And also you will have to carry your patient's records, your list, everything you will have to carry. But nowadays everything is changed. When the pandemic was going on, the teleconsultation, the doctors do the teleconsultation. Doctors will sit at their home and patients can sit at their place. There is a teleconsultation. That's made simple by cloud. The doctor will get all the details of the patients from their portal. So where the portal is hosted, that's in the cloud. That 24 by 7, that data is available. If hospitals are not running also, the site will be open. They can access from anywhere in the world. The healthcare, we could say the teleconsultation. That's the main thing. And if you're visiting Apollo hospitals and all, you just uh, tell them your mobile number or tell your patient ID. There will be some, uh, something called patient ID. They will have all your records if you have visited before there. Or if you newly visit to any hospital, they will ask your mobile number, your email ID. They will ask your secondary number. They will ask your relative number or relative name. So they will have a records of your medical data. And second thing, marketing and advertising, even this is also very useful nowadays. You have observed, like, as I said, like if you wanted to purchase something on the internet, you will go to the Google and you will search it. I need a watch. So you will check out the watch. At the moment, you will get a lot of ads. If you access the Facebook or YouTube, in between, you will see if you searched recently about the watch, you will get an ad. Right? It's a pop-up ad. If you uh, if you searched about the shoes, you will get ads of uh, telling about the shoes. You will have this shoe from the, from this website. You will get for this money. This is how cloud in the marketing and advertising sector. And in the retail, especially for the e-commerce website that we all know, the Flipkart and Amazon. And in the finance sector, that's the most important thing. Like if you're going back to 10 years back, if you wanted to make any transaction in the bank, you will have to do before four o'clock. If you wanted to make online transactions also, you will have to make before banking time. There will be some banking time like 10 to four. In between, you will have to do the all the transaction. Or after four, if you do the transaction, it will not enter in your statement it will end on the next day only that was 10 years ago now totally changed upi had came you can do just google pay phone pay ptm and all within a seconds right within a seconds you really can do that why so where it is hosted the bank will not be having all the data the bank, if you go to any bank, you can see server room. There will be having some switches and servers. That's it. But most of the data is stored in the cloud. Why means if the bank is off, of the bank time is over also, everything is automated now. Everything is automated. No need to enter anything manually. Everything will do automatically in the cloud with the help of technologies. No need any kind of manpower for entering the this person had sent this much amount to that person. No need. It will be generated automatically. It will be generated behind. And education purpose. Nowadays, most of the institutions are having their own platforms for doing the online classes. We are very, we are very known to Zoom, um, Microsoft Teams, even Google Meet. Cisco Webex. So everything is worked on the basis of cloud. You can access it right from your mobile phone. You can access your online classes. Maybe some of you are attending this webinar through your mobile phones. How does it even possible? It's happening through the cloud because even I'm not having any kind of server with me. Even either you are not having any server with you. You just have internet connection. Even I have internet connection and I have this app. Even you have this app. We are just connected. 
So who's doing all these things? Cloud. So everywhere cloud is there. Right? So obviously there will be some security issues as well if you're using cloud computing. Am I right? If you're using obviously even it will have some drawbacks. So this concept, the cloud computing concept in 1980s itself, it was there on the table. But people are very scared to implement this technology because you will not be having any idea where your data is stored and how is stored, who's keeping it, who's only seeing it, no idea at all. So very scared. Now look at see the different kind of security issues. On the cloud computing, obviously, there will be some goods and bads. Malware injections. The attacker will send you some malware in, malwares into your systems. And what they will do, they will gain the access of your system and they'll take out your data. And denial of service attacks. Denial of service attacks, most of the organizations nowadays it's facing, especially banking sectors. What it means, there will be a limit for your network traffic. For example, at a time, 100 person can access a website. If it is exceeding more than 100 people are accessing that particular website, obviously there will be a traffic and there will be a load because the buffer memory will get full and it will be loading. You will not get your response. That is what denial of service attacks and employee errors. Many of the employees don't know how to use cloud. You will have to train your employees correctly. This is the way of using cloud. You can, you will have a username and you will have a password and how to open that, how to access that, what service that you have to use, what data you have to store. There are some policies, employees are making mistakes, data breaches. Data breaches means your data, someone is accessing without your knowledge or without your permission, somebody is accessing your data. That is called data breaches. Nowadays, lot of data breaches are happening. If you just Google it, you can see data breaches. What the hackers will do, they will fetch your personal data. For example, Air India. And India also has lost their passengers' details. Their username, their password, email address, and all. Hackers can easily take that. And ransomware attack, it's very popular one. The ransomware attacks. Ransomware means it will the attacker will encrypt your data which is stored in your systems. And the ransomware attackers, what they will do, they will ask you for a ransom amount for the decryption key. That is not so easy for you to decrypt that because we don't have any idea what kind of encryption code they have used. And insecure APIs. Obviously, we will get a only one small access point or the user interface for accessing our cloud, cloud service. That won't be, we cannot say that is 100% secure always. There will be vulnerability in that and insider threats. That's a, one of the most important uh, security issue because your employee itself, maybe your colleague itself, maybe leak, maybe they'll take some revenge or they will have some issues with you. Some internal fights, politics, we can say. Even that's also a threat to your cloud computing. Nowadays, what is the biggest challenge in the cloud computing? That comes security. Security is the biggest challenge in the cyber world now. So let's see what are the other challenges that you will have to face. The first one, misconfigurations and inadequate change control. People don't know how to set up a cloud. That is the only main reason we are getting Malware injection attack, inside threats, insecure APIs, everything's happening. We don't know how to configure that. So what is the solution for that? 
you will have to get trained how to use that how to set up that you have to learn first learn then start implementing second thing lack of cloud security architecture and strategy many companies are still working in the distributed computing that means server client model you will have your client pc and it will be connected to your switch device then it is connected to your server and this server will be connected with the internet i mean your isp this is how the normal architecture of an organization we can have multiple pcs not only one single pc we can have multiple pcs for example if this pc wanted to access something this pc wanted to send a mail it will go to the switch first then it will go to the server then it will go to your isp this is a normal architecture so people are thinking okay we can do the same thing on the cloud as well when you have a cloud interface you will have your pc you will have your switch from this switch it will directly go to the cloud i mean your isp your internet instead of the internet only you will have your cloud it can be aws it can be your azure so the server is not coming hit here so where the server will be hosted the server will be hosted inside of aws or azure so people are thinking okay that's a very easy job so we can do that that is not a easy task that is not at all easy task configuring your server within the cloud that is different from traditional model the traditional model you will get the server machine in your hand you can plug it you can connect it you can configure it so when you are into the cloud you will not see the hardware parts you will get only one access point you will have your username and you will have your password that you will have to access so what is your requirement only based on that you have to make your architecture then we can say that is secure third one insufficient identity credential access and key management and fourth one account hijacking i'll combine these two and i'll explain people don't know what to access if you are creating aws account aws account creation is free anyone can create the aws account you just need to have your debit card or credit card information with you that is more than enough and it's a free of cost for one month you can create it what account you are creating that is a super account it will have a lot of soft power you can access any feature you can do anything for your employees based on their designation or based on their profile you will have to give the access for example manager will be having more permission in their office for a software developer will be having very limited permission compared to manager right so based on their level you will have to give access without any requirement please do not give any full access for any users and fourth one the hack on hijacking hack on hijacking means someone else is accessing your account how does it happen people have the habit of keeping their passwords very simple because nowadays we one person will be having multiple email address multiple accounts like in the facebook one instagram one linkedin one everywhere lot of account and lot of password so very difficult to remember so what you will do if you are working in organization where most of the people i have seen they will keep their employee id employee id and date of birth that's easy that is easy for your colleague to access your account even even he is also using the same pattern everyone is using the same pattern so they can easily 
get your username and password so that's not a good idea please avoid that you have to set up complexity passwords for preventing account hijacking now let's see cyber security incidents response now uh, as of now what we discussed we have discussed about the what is cloud computing where it is used how it is working and what are the challenges and the security issues so what will happen i have got an attack i am working in organization i am the system admin and i have got an attack in my system malware attack what should i do that time the cyber security incident response team will react there will be some team within the organization that is called cyber security incident response team they will react over there they will have some set of policies as a first step what we have to do how we can stop the attack how we can track the attack how we can uh, eradicate our data and how we can mitigate this issue and they will create the report nowadays many of the organization are appointing this team cyber security incident response team the people have more knowledge about cyber security if you wanted to be an expert in the cyber security you should have a knowledge in network you should know more about network security you need to learn about this you need to learn about uh, different kind of operating systems also you need to know about the latest threats it is security threats and how you can mitigate it and you need to know how to scan the vulnerability and you should also know how to do the attack pen testing if you know only to do the attacks and all then only you will come to know this is a, this kind of attack we are getting it this is a phishing attack or this is a sql injection attack if you know only that if you know to do this attack obviously even you can easily find out what's attack is happening so you need to learn all these things upon that you need to know how to respond for this if an a ransomware attack had coming into a system i have seen people in movies and all what they will do they will disconnect the server or they will remove the power, uh, power cable that's a very bad idea that's a very bad idea if you remove it also that still it will be running on your system right once you restart so how to act at that particular time only the response team will be knowing it so you need to learn about the incident response as well and after committing any crime or if you have infected any kind of attack or you are like a victim of any attack you can do the cyber forensic how the police officer will investigate some crime scenes right same way even you can investigate the cyber attacks if you are very good at digital forensic and cyber forensic there are a lot of tools are available in the market to do that and let us back to cloud security how we can secure it i will give you some tips for you how to secure your cloud security first one authentication and identity you should set up a, if you are using aws service there is a feature called iam identity access management you should enable this feature in your aws if you enable this you can create the users like how you do the in the windows system you will have user accounts right same way in the cloud also you can create the user accounts and you can set up the passwords for them and you can give them limited access they can access only your s3 bucket they can only store the data or they can only view the data they don't have permission to delete it if they wanted to delete the data they have to request the system admin to delete the data like that you can set up and access control techniques we can enable mfa multi factor authentication i hope everyone is aware of that mfa 
multi factor authentication i have seen people are implemented the same thing for their uh, email accounts sometime if you trying to open your email account from any web browser or through your laptop it will ask you to verify from your mobile phone they will send you some number and just tap yes from your mobile that is what mfa same way you enable mfa for your cloud while accessing you need to do the mfa if you enable the mfa that will be very helpful it will be secure because no one else is accessing if someone is stole your username and password also it will not be useful until and unless you do the mfa and encryption techniques obviously if you are storing your data in the cloud that will be encrypted why don't you encrypt first from your local system then store it if you are storing your encrypted data into your cloud that will be more secure so before storing anything on the cloud please try to encrypt them and store it and fourth one secure deletion techniques you should create some policies in your organization that only system admin can delete or only the team lead can delete the particular data or particular information from the storage or from the database you should not give the permission to everyone to delete the data got it so you can make policies for that so make some security policies for deletion of data for creation of accounts for the password policy like that you can create and you can secure it so that's how you can secure your cloud okay even this is the biggest part of cyber security from the youtube and all you will get lot of videos about the how to access the aws how to create how to use this feature from the aws or azure or any any other cloud platforms but they will not teach you how to secure that that you need to learn separately because you need to learn about the network security first operating security the web application security and you need to know how to respond for an incident and while if you have, if you wanted to be do in a cyber forensic you really need to know what are the tools that we are using for attacking what's the attacker behavior so everything you need to learn first then only you can be a cyber security expert okay so far any questions you are open to ask any questions related to cyber security and the cloud security i think your chat box is on so you can ask any questions on that as well so the individuals who are looking forward to make their career in that cloud security or cyber security i'll hardly take 5 uh, minutes uh, professor rajnas so we'll explain them that what kind of programs they can look forward to it will be beneficial for those who are there and uh, they can also circulate these uh, data points to their acquaintances as well who are also looking forward to make their career in that area so i'll share my screen and then we can have uh, take the questions from the individuals if somebody sure. So Dhruv and uh, there are individuals who are following us through uh, YouTube as well. I believe. Let me quickly share my screen. Uh, my screen is visible now. Can somebody tell me? No, sir. Okay, just it just broadcasted. Is it visible now? Can you see my screen? Yeah. 
My screen is visible. Can you, somebody tell me hello? Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Okay. okay. So, a quick brief. Uh, there are sort of uh, programs that we offer uh, in which individuals they can look for to make their career, which is into cyber security and cloud security. So, why there is a need for PGP programs and cyber security or cloud security? So, because if you just look around, there is no holistic program that would be covering up the 360 degree aspects of uh, security, which Professor Ajnus has explained to you. Even the technology today, they are moving towards the new emerging areas like machine learning for cyber security and cloud security, cognitive and AI security, uh, which is coming up, Python for cyber security. So there are traditional programs does not provide any inputs on these emerging areas. Uh, there are fragmented trainings and certifications available, but no holistic education uh, for developing the future of uh, security. That's why the reason is we have come up and off, started offering this post program in cyber security that we offer. So quick brief about us, ages, uh, we started our journey in the year 2002 uh, with the support of Bharti Airtel. That was the time when we started off Asia's only master's program in telecom management. And almost for the last uh, Eight years back, uh, we joined hands with IBM and we started offering various programs in data science, AI, cyber security. And uh, this is a quick brief about it. There are a lot of other properties you can go and check it out, like Data Science Congress, which is Ramble Award, which will give you through which we have a deepest penetration with the organizations as well. Uh, so these are the academia collaborations we had over the past, like IBM, the deep learning you must be aware about, uh, UBTech, which is one of the largest robotics. Uh, based company. AWS Educate, uh, we, we just had a discussion about AWS. So AWS has also joined hands with us. Uh, so uh, the program, what we have talked about, which is a full-time uh, PGP program, which is an on-campus uh, model in uh, cyber security. And this program is of 11 months. Commencement date for this course is 25th of August, for which the applicants are open. And we have this uh, program we are offering in Mumbai and Bangalore. Process for this uh, program is it's a completely online application. After the test would be given, and the interview would be scheduled. And in case anybody gets through and shortlisted, one can one will get the admission of a letter. So Vignesh, I would suggest you if you are there, you can share that link of full time program to the candidates, uh, which is a completely eleven month program, completely structured applied cybersecurity program. Similar way, we are offering a full time postgraduate program in cybersecurity in a live interactive way. So, which is again 11 month program, commencement date is 25th of August. And individuals who have done any uh, graduation is must. So, if you are coming from graduation, bachelor's, BTEC, MTech, BSc, in any stream, even uh, BCom computers graduates are there, BCMs, MSc graduates, uh, these individuals are eligible for applying into this uh, cyber security program that we offer. Then, process is the same to for the application, which is online application, after you test and interview in case you get through and shortlist, so you get the information of it. So this is how the uh, program will take. Uh, for the working professionals, we have the weekend executive postgraduate program, which is happening on every Saturday and Sunday. Duration is the same 11 months. Commencement date is 25th of June. And this is again the complete applied cyber security program in which the uh, classes will be held, as I mentioned, on Saturday and Sunday. And uh, the, the process to get enrolled, online application, admission interview, and in case you get through and shortlisted, you get the admission of a letter. Vignesh, I would suggest to you, please share the links to the individuals. Quick highlights about the program. This program will be taught by the best of the brains, industry experts, top faculties. Most of the CSOs you will also find will mentor the individuals in this program. Uh, it is a globally acceptable credit structure program that we offer. Major emphasis, as I mentioned, if you have been uh, listening to me, uh, that it's an uh, applied program. So applied means during the entire 11 months duration, participants, they will be working upon real projects and which we call uh, uh, portfolio projects. And which is as good as working for the real life organization because participants, they will be creating the complete defensive based mechanism A to Z. Uh, all the aspects and through which the participants, they get their hands dirty with the technology and this is what companies they are looking forward to. Uh, when it comes to recruitment. And uh, participants will get the state-of-the-art cybersecurity labs we have the, um, at ages, um, and the AWS cybersecurity lab and softwares, which is completely virtual labs. 
one can access these labs anytime and 24/7 on the fly on the go curriculum if you just look at the curriculum which is one of the most comprehensive and industry led curriculum of we have got education loan from idfc bank to join hands with us they will provide the education loan and uh, learning management system which is a world class lms what we have got any lecture what we deliver that simultaneously get recorded and uploaded to the learning management system one can easily go and have the access of the lectures and the career management center obviously after 11 months of complete training career management center at ages will provide uh, excellent placement opportunities for the individuals quick highlight as i mentioned it's an applied program real projects will be the major emphasis that's why the applied part would come uh, exposure to very high end labs career management center globally accepted program this is the program which will cover the 360 degree dimensions of cyber security starting from setting up the entire foundation stone for this uh, cyber security and cloud security aspects starting from your infrastructure security your uh, network security aspects your data security application security cloud security aspects individuals they will be learning in this program along with that individuals they will get their hands completely drenched with the technology through uh, by learning ethical hacking cloud security digital forensics pen testing vulnerability analysis cyber security incident responses that we have discussed in the previous uh, uh, talk by professor ajinis and uh, so this is uh, all what the individuals they will be getting the hands you know completely they will get the exposure of it now uh, these are the delivery models what we have got full time weekend and online executive models what we have got with us so quick quick recap about the starting date so full time program is starting from 25th august in mumbai and bangalore june we are starting 25th june 2022 is the weekend executive program we are starting off these are the core courses uh, quickly i'll give you a brief on that like threat intelligence and intelligence and threat hunting cyber security incident responses python for cyber security cyber forensics as i told you in the previous slide as well uh, cyber security and privacy laws machine learning for cyber security python for cyber security it has got completely uh, core courses and electives as well one can choose four or five electives as per your area of interest So the career management center plays a very vital role. These are the major recruiters. Always, they do come and recruit the candidates from ages. You name it, we have these companies with us on board. This is what the status is. Like minimum package for the fresher, it starts from six point five. Average package would go like eight point five to eleven to twelve lakh rupees. Highest package would be thirteen to fourteen. It goes for the fresher. Experienced candidate will get up to three hundred to five hundred percent hike over the past round packages. This is another exciting feature in this program that in such assistantship which we are offering to the individuals, uh, depending upon your interview and the test how we perform, uh, individuals they have uh, the option and the possibility that they will get the uh, research assistantship that that would vary from fifty thousand to two point five lakh rupees. That much amount would be adjusted from your total tuition fees. And the bank loans, as I was discussing with you, so IDFC Bank they have joined hands with us. So uh, for this program, individuals hardly it takes ten to fifteen days max time to get the loan uh, process. Quick process of submission, online application, aptitude test, interview, and in case you get through and shortlist, they will have the admission offer. And there are individuals who are looking for the short term programs, not for the eleven months completely. So we have cyber security uh, uh, certified cyber security professional course, which is. Uh, For which is for four months, and it's a weekend online live interactive session starting from 18th June. So individuals who want to start early and do not want to spend much time, and they want to uh, get hold on some technologies on these cloud security and cyber security, they can join that program. Any graduation is must in this program, and online application, interview, and the admission of a letter will be given. Uh, another program what we have got, which is completely upon cloud security program, which is again one month program. and it's a weekend online live interactive sessions will be given so the commencement date is from 6th june so this is a one month program individuals who want to get hold on these uh, cloud security aspect which is short term uh, program they can also look forward for enrollments or the applications are open for this course as well and we are starting it from 6th june 2022 so uh, i would also suggest you guys that we keep coming up with various sessions and cyber security hackathons so you can subscribe to our youtube channel that is ages tv and you will get a lot of such interactive sessions which will be beneficial for you and for your peers as well 
So you can also download these white paper, which we have published with our knowledge partner, like Deloitte and KPMG, like reimagining India in context of cyber security threats. You can uh, uh, go and Google it and download that white paper. You will get more understanding about cyber security. So we are open for the questions. If anybody would have any questions, please uh, ask your questions, maybe through YouTube or we are live on YouTube as in other channels as well, or maybe this platform. And this, these are my coordinates. I'm Ritin Ritin Joshi. And you can reach out to me or my team as well if you would have any questions in those uh, in that program that we are offering. So I believe we are, uh, we do not have any questions so far. So there are individuals, uh, they might have some questions over chat box. Okay. All right, so uh, my colleague there, he has also shared certain links with you. So if you would have any questions, you can reach out to us. And uh, so thank you so much, uh, Professor Ajahn, for this wonderful session. And I believe, uh, the audience, what we have got. So I believe that session would have been helpful for you. Uh, and certainly, uh, if you would have any questions, you can reach out to us for further. Uh, if you would have any questions or if you want to join. Thank you so much for the sessions, for this wonderful session. And uh, we'll be keep coming up with these sessions in the near future as well, because we have the audience following us on YouTube as well. So we will be live on YouTube most of the time. And uh, the first uh, attendees, or maybe the, who would be enrolling for these sessions, they will have a benefit that they will get the exact uh, room link through which we are doing that session so that it will be a more interactive and they can have the options to turn on their videos and ask in a live environment that questions as well. Thank you so much uh, for this wonderful session, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much.